Said that we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel that differ from what we preach. Let the angels be accursed. He said, as I said before, so say I now again. If any man come and preach any other gospel that differ from what he preach, let him be accursed. Well, I have to take what the apostles said because they walk with Jesus, talk with them, ate with them, handled him. But by the time Paul came along, Jesus was already dead have already rose and ascended above all heavens. Didn't have the privilege to walk with Jesus in the flesh, but he did have the privilege to walk with Jesus in the spirit. So he was made an ambassador, given authority from authority to represent authority and speak by that same authority. Now, hear what the apostle said. I beseech you therefore, Give chapter brother, and verse again. Romans chapter 12, and we're at verse 1. I beseech you. I beseech you therefore, brethren. Meaning I'm getting your attention, brothers. By the mercies of God. That what? That ye present your bodies. Wait a minute. How do God want it brought? That ye present your you bodies. You know, when you present something to somebody, you want them to have it. They don't have to argue with you. They ain't got to fight with you. When you want someone to have something, you present it. That's right. You do it willingly, not by constraint. Listen closely at what the Apostle Paul says. That you present, that you present your, your body as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, what kind? Holy. Do you hear that, viewers? Hmm. Holy. God wants you to present yourself to him. Now, right then, that's telling you that God designed the human family to be an offering. That's right. Amen. You are a meat offering, a fleshy sacrifice That's right. that God made. And after he made you, he wants you to offer yourself to him That's right. willingly. That's right. He said, I made you for my glory. He didn't make you the party and the smoke and the drink and run around like a fool. God made you for him. For I have created him for my glory. Do you hear this? In the book of Isaiah chapter 43 and at verse 7. What did God say begin at verse 6? At verse 6. Says what? I will say to the north, give up. All right, north. They got all North America and everything that's on the north side of the world. God wants you to do what? Give up. All of us. All of us got something to give up. That's right. Viewers, you have something to give up. Oh, yeah. And that's what the devil don't want you to do. Give up. That's right. Surrender. Give over. You know, anytime you, I, when I was a young teenager, sometimes I'd get in the scraps, get in the fights in the hood. Sometimes that fight can go so long, you get exhausted. You get tired. But brother, as somebody hits you in the right place, <laughs> mm -hmm, one of them kidney shots, <laughs> yeah, man, paralyze your legs and change your breathing. And if you can't bounce back from that shot, or that good solid sucker punch to the jaw that puts you in the land of soap opera as the world turns. <laughs> and they sucker punch you. I remember <laughs> fella I grew up with, we was close friends as a child. In fact, he was my best friend as a child. And he may be watching, I called him Randy, Ernest Thomas. So like to me, man, that fellow will fight every week. <laughs> Several times a week, me and Randy will fight. That's right. And yet we played every day. We were best of friends. That's right. I would be down at his house, he'd be up my house. I'd be down at his house, he'd be up my house. And for some dumb reason, we end up fighting about something. <laughs> I mean, in the street. And if they, all, all you have to do is see Randy, 
And somebody said, him and Nikki fighting again. <laughs> or if you saw me first, Nikki and Randy is fighting again. Well, I remember one day Randy shocked me because uh, he had a very orthodox style of fighting. But uh, Randy laid hands on me <laughs> quicker than I expected. And uh, I, I remember to this day at 57, <laughs> Randy sucker punched me. I mean, it came from somewhere. And it sounded like someone knocked at a door. It was so hard. <laughs> and I remember I shook and stepped back. And in my mind, you're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> huh. That's the way the word of God is. That's right. A sucker punch is a punch that catch you off guard. God's words come and catch you off guard. In the natural, you can put a shell up. That's right. Spiritual, you can't put no shell up to block the hits of scripture. Yeah. Word of God hits you everywhere, mind, heart, Soul everywhere. Hit your past, hit your future, hit your present. So God wants you to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Notice the term. Present your body. A living sacrifice. He said, say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my, and daughters, my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. Why did he make us? For well, I have created him for my glory. Now do you hear that, viewer? Isaiah declared that God made you for my glory. That's why you're here. That's right. In the midst of a turmoil world, and the world is certainly in turmoil, Amen. America... Millions are rejoicing at the election. Some are happy, some are sad. And I've said moreover, well, ain't nobody can get in the White House without God's permission. And whoever get in there, whoever or whatever get in the White House, you're going to find that they will always have belief that contradict the most high. This is why I'm telling the world, present yourself to God, bow to God, and accept him above everything else. Are you listening? I want to present you to God by the words of his grace. When you present yourself to God, you have to present not only body, but what the body consists of. Right. Now, when, a, when the Bible says present your body a living sacrifice, because in the Old Testament, when a sacrifice was offered, it was killed, it was dead, right. then presented. Right. But now God wants a living, living sacrifice. He wants you to offer yourself while you're alive right. so he can get the glory out of the living. Because the dead know of nothing. Listen at this. Back in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Said he what? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living present sacrifice. Present your body a living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice he want, Williams? Holy. Glory to God. Viewers, that's the type of message that we have. That's right. It's a holy, holy. <clears throat> sanctified message. Now, as coming up as a child, I used to hear that term for years. You got to be sanctified. I used to hear people say, I belong to a sanctified church. You know what sanctification means, viewer? Yeah. Sanctification means you're set apart. Right. In fact, one scripture talks about how the priests did not sanctify themselves sufficiently, right. meaning they didn't set themselves apart in the right manner. Now, when you are sanctified, you have to be set apart for something. And God wants you to be set aside for him. That's right. Are you listening, viewers? That's right. God wants you to be set aside for him. That's right. 
For now, this is the will of him, God. If you're set aside for him, yes. now that means he alone is going to get the glory out of your life. He alone, you will work to satisfy. He alone, you will work to please. He alone, you will bow to his commandments. He alone, will you will submit to. So God didn't make you to be a sacrifice without sanctification. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 2. Listen. For you know what commandments no, we gave you. No, no, you better begin at verse 1. At verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and at verse 1. Yes. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. and exhort you by the Lord Jesus. We want to exhort you by the Lord Jesus. That as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk. How ye ought to walk. And to please God. I, wait a minute. Hmm. Where did they get that lesson from? How ye ought to walk. Where did they get that lesson from? And exhort you by the Lord Jesus. That what? That as ye have received of us. How that's, that's it. Pay attention now. Pay attention. That ye received of us. Of us. They got it from the apostle. They got that lesson of what? How ye ought to walk. How ye ought to walk. And to please God. That's why the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? Right. How can he preach except he be sent? The apostle taught the church how ye ought to walk. And to please God. How you ought to walk and to please God, meaning how you ought to live, how you ought to pray, how you ought to fast, how you ought to serve, how you ought to sing, how you ought to talk. Everything that pertains to holiness, Lord, take God, you got to be taught it. How you ought to read, how you ought to listen, how you ought to hear. Do you hear this? That as have ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk. You got it from the apostle, how you ought to walk and please God. So ye would abound more and more. Wait a minute. So you can abound how? So ye would abound more and more. Oh, yes. You want to do this more and more. That's right. uh -huh. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. You know what commandments and you know who we got them from. We got them by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. This is God's will. Even your sanctification. Even your sanctification. That ye Now, mm -hmm. the will of God sanctifies you. That's right. When you are set aside for God using. Now, let, let, let me give you a better understanding. There were numerous of offerings in the Old Testament. Yeah. A burnt offering was not a water offering. A water offering was not a bread offering. A bread offering was not a wave offering. A wave offering was not a stone offering. Amen. When a sacrifice will be offered on a stone, or if you got a sacrifice, you got water poured on the stone. If you got a burnt offering, that thing got to be set on fire. Each offering was specific yeah. of how God wanted to be offered. Viewers, right. God is very specific, very clear, very plain how he wants to be served. Now you have some folks here, I'm going to church to worship God. You got it wrong. Do you know what worshiping God means? Worshiping God have one simple meaning, obeying him. If you think worship is narrowed down to singing and clapping and jumping around and falling behind chairs and getting smelling sauce, you folks doing that all over the place and God don't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Eh? God is not in it. Worshiping God is obeying God. Because uh, if I can't sing a note, or if I'm not able to bend my knees, or if I can't clap my hands, I still, thanks be unto God, can worship God. Why? I can obey Him. Because 
uh, worship is bigger than the song. There's no baby so about it's bigger than the song. You got people singing all day and they wish up in God. And to the prophet, by God's permission, uh, calling noise. That's right. And they tell the folk, take away that noise. I don't want to hear the melody of thine vows. God calling noise. Take thou away Listen from me. Listen at this in the book of Amos. Amos chapter 5 and verse 23. Take thou away from me. The noise, the of, noise thy songs, of your song. For I will not hear. I don't want, I'm not going to hear. The melody of thy the vows. The melody of thine vows. Yet they call it wish up. That's right. So there was, and Jesus come along and said, you wish up, glory to God, you know not what. Meaning, you don't know what you're doing. And they come back and say, we know what we wish up for salvation is to the Jews for the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. There's a right way to worship God and there's a wrong way. There's a right way to be sanctified. And then there's a way you haven't came nowhere near sanctification. So, church goer, so-called Christian, you that are watching, are you sanctified today? This is the will of God. Because you, let, you better get chapter and verse. First, I'm bringing you God's will. First I'm bringing you God's agenda. I'm bringing you God's purpose. I'm bringing you the precepts of God, what God outlined for everybody to follow. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. What is it? For this is the will of God. This. Don't bring me nothing else. That's right. Anything that contradicts this is not the will of God. This is God's will. Even your sanctification. Even your sanctification. Uh, listen, when you're sanctified, uh-huh. Your whole body right. have to come under the law of sanctification. Right. That means every part of self is set aside right. for the usage of God. Glory to God. Right. The hands that I used to pop my fingers to blues and R&B and rap. Right. Amen. Now I clap to spiritual things. Why? Now my hands is sanctified. That's right. The hands I used to steal. Let him that steal, don't steal no more. Why? My, there's a new law. That's right. Glory to God. It's a sanctified law. It's the law of sanctification. That's right. Eh? That's right. That's covering what I do with my hands. That's right. And so the law says, handle not, That's right. touch. Not you better stay ahead of me and follow me now. Yeah. I'm working on the law yeah. of sanctification and what the law, what it atomized for the body. Right. Because it says, present your body. So I have to look at what am I permitted to do with my body under the law for it take God of sanctification. In the book of Colossians chapter 2. I want to deal with every part of the body. All right, let's read quick. Colossians chapter 2, we'll start at verse 20. Says what? Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ. Wait a minute. You know, when it says, if ye be dead with Christ, with Christ. that means if you're sanctified with Christ. That's right. Someone said, well, Pastor Jennings, I didn't see that. A dead body is set apart That's from right. the living. Right. Now, do you see it? Right. <laughs> huh? right. You know, when you're sanctified, you're set apart. If you be dead. If you be dead with Christ. If you be dead how? With Christ. You know, only Christ can sanctify you. Yeah. So when it says if you be dead with Christ, that simply means if you're sanctified with Christ, because the Bible says you are dead. That's right. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. Can you get what I'm telling you? Wherefore. Wherefore. If you be dead with Christ. If you be dead, if you be sanctified, if you be set apart. With now, Christ. here. I got to be dead with Christ. With Christ. And if I'm dead, I'm set apart from the living. That's right. That's right. I just want to pause there to give you time to digest what I just said. That's right. Eh? That's right. I said, if you're dead, glory to God, glory to God. If you're dead with Christ with right God. now, right now, dead yeah. with Christ, yeah. then your body, your temple is set aside from the living. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? 
if I'm dead in Christ, following the laws and the precepts of God, I'm separated from the living, and the living will be the sinner because she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Right. Are you getting me? Did you hear what it said? Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ, if ye be sanctified with Christ, from the rudiments of the world, from the rudiments, rudiments from of the, the world. function That's right. of the world. Why as though living in the world are Why ye, as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Why are you still living? That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. Do you hear this? Why as from Wherefore, Come on, son. Wherefore, if ye be dead with if Christ, dead with Christ, from the rudiments of the world, from the things of the world, why as though living in the world? Why as though living in the world? Are ye subject to ordinances? You're still alive. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. In other words, that means this. You know, there's dead and there's dying. Yeah. That's not the same. No. Dead. And dying are two different stages of the body. That's right. You know, you may got someone that's sick in the hospital, and you go look at him, and you say, oh, man, he, he dying. He dying. He laying there moaning and groaning and losing weight and I wanna, got a ventilator machine and all that stuff, dying. And you can see that machine monitoring his heart. Beep, just going up, beeping, beep, beep. Then all of a sudden, flatliner. Yeah. They come in and may try to resuscitate him or her and get those things that shock them on the chest, but God collect the spirit, gone. That's right. They're not dying no more. That's right. Dead means complete. For ye are dead. Do you hear this? In Colossians chapter 3 and now verse four, three. Dying and dead naturally. Dying and dead spiritually. Now, spiritually dying, meaning you have not yet mastered, you have not yet mastered complete and total Sanctification. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter what 15. What do you mean? You haven't yet set yourself apart from all forms of sin. There's some sin you haven't yet abstained from. Uh, you're dying out to it, but you're not yet dead, meaning complete. Overcome it. That's right. What did he say? First Corinthians 15 and verse 31. That's what? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in I Christ. I will what? I protest by your rejoicing, uh -huh. which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. I die daily. I die what? Daily. I die what? I die daily. Oh, he ain't say dead. He said I die how? Daily. Dying, meaning you're dying daily. Daily. Not dead yet. It's a slow death. Amen. Slow. That's right. That brother or sister may be struggling with cigarettes. Amen. But God wants that temple for himself. You see, God wants your body to be sanctified. That's right. Amen. Sanctified. Sanctified. Set apart. He didn't make your mouth to blow smoke. Yeah. He made your mouth to talk about him. Yeah. Sing about him. Testify about his goodness and sing praises about him. He gave you a mouth so it can be full of Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Eh? That's right. Full of Jesus and full of his glory. Full of his praise. He didn't make your mouth for any form of corruption to come out of there. He didn't make your ears to listen at nothing that opposes him. That's right. It didn't make your eyes to look at anything that will condemn your temple. That's why he demand, he demand for you to have a single eye. He didn't make your hands to touch anything that will break his precepts, that will break his law. He didn't make your feet to carry your body any place that's against his will. 
That's why if he find you there, he said, all right, all right, I see you where you shouldn't be. So I'm going to implement a law that says come out from among them and be separate. Why? Why do you want me separate, Lord? Because I made you for my glory. And if I made you for my glory, I the one that gave your body the title temple and said that your body is the temple of the living God. And the reason why God gave the body the title of the temple to let you know if you want him there, he had come there and dwell there. Oh yeah, glory to God. No, you're not. Hey, if you want him there, glory to God. Here, here, come there and dwell there. Now, proof that you want God there, you start seeking him. Oh, praise his great name. And you, you start seeking him because on your own, you can't die. No, 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 on your own, you can't die on your own. You can't even be put to death on your own. God got to send a murderer. Yeah. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Amen. You better give me the book of Jeremiah quickly. Jeremiah. Let's see what weapon did he make the prophet. Yes. Amen. He made him a battle axe. A battle axe. Amen. If you will hear this, I say, God, I say. That's right. Glory to God. Have to get a murderer. That's right. He have to make a preacher. Amen. And that's what I mean by making him a murderer. He takes the preacher and then format him formulate him to be a weapon. That's right. And, and God used the preacher to kill, right. kill, kill. How much? All the day long. That's right. Jeremiah yeah. chapter 51. All right, you better read quick now. Jeremiah 51 and at verse 20. Let me show you this. Thou art my battle axe. Wait a minute. Give chapter and verse again. Jeremiah chapter 51 and at verse 20. And what did he say to the prophet? Thou art thou my, thou. Art. My battle axe. Wait a minute. Talking <laughs> to a man. That's right. How he made him. That's right. Thou art my battle axe. And weapons of war. He called him a weapon of war. For with thee. Wait. Amen. Do you hear this? With thee. With thee. Will I break in pieces the oh, nations. Oh, glory to God. He's going to take the preacher. Amen. And make him a weapon. That's right. And say it with thee. Will I break in pieces the nations. Oh, yes. God's going to take the, hallelujah, glory to God. He's going to take a preacher. Yeah and take preachers and break nations. That's right. How are you going to break nations? By the power of the speech of God. That's right. It is the power of the speech of God that comes from the word of God by the authority of the spirit of God for, that break nations. Eh? For with thee, with thee, will I break in pieces the nations. That means by using you, right. I'm going to break nations. And with thee, and by using you, will I destroy kingdoms? I'm going to destroy kings. And with thee, and by using will I you, break, break, will I break in pieces the horse I'm and his break rider? I'm going to break in pieces the horse and the rider. And with thee, and by using you, will I break in pieces the chariot I'm and his rider? I'm going to break in pieces the chariot and the rider. With thee also, and by using that. Now, now, let, let, let me back up now. Amen. When they say I'm going to break the horse. And the, rider. and the rider. Then when they say, well, now, I'm going to break up the chariot, chariot. and the rider, and the rider. that represents two, two different class of people. That's yeah. right. Yeah? That's right. And that represents two different class of people. Right. You know, back then when you had a chariot, uh, you was at a certain class yeah. from one that may just have a horse. That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. It's like today, somebody may drive a Rolls Royce versus one that may, buy, may drive a Volkswagen. That's right. Two different class of people. That's right. But God says, I don't care. And with thee, I'm going to get the one on the horse and break him. That's right. And if you can afford a chariot, glory to God, I'm going to break him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Come on, son. With thee also. My God, with thee also. Will I break in pieces man and man, woman? Man, wait. Mm -hmm. That lets you know he has no respect to person. That's right. I'm going to break who? With the old soul, will break I break in pieces, man, man and woman? I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how cute you think you are. I don't care how handsome you believe you are. If you believe you're God's gift to, to mermaids, if possible. That's right. Amen. God going to get a preacher and going to make him sharp. That's right. You see, a battle axe is not made to shave with. Oh, yeah. A battle axe is made to dismember. That's right. eh? That's right. It's made to give you pain. And I never saw nobody who got hit 
by a natural battle axe is crazy about the one that hit him. Amen. They don't hug him. They don't speak well of him. In fact, they run from him. That's right. Or they got a weapon to fight back. That's, right. That's you, viewers. God has made me a weapon of war. And you don't like when this weapon hits your arm that's around your second wife. Yeah. And we cut your arm off. Right. Amen. You don't like it. Amen. When this axe comes right between your bed yeah. and separate you and your boyfriend. Right. Uh, you don't like that. Yeah. You don't like when this weapon, amen, knock that pipe out your mouth. Right. Uh, you, you can't stand that. Right. Amen. Cut your eye right out. That way you don't have nothing to put eyelashes on. <laughs> Glory to God. Cut, just break up your makeup kit. Amen. Break up the bar that you go to. Take your bar. Amen. Smash your liquor. Amen. Take that man and with the battle axe and knock his dress off. Right. Hey! Amen. Amen. Take the battle axe and split the rainbow flag right in half. That's right. What is that? With me also. Will, take with, will I break in with pieces? These, take all, take all three of your gods. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take all three of your gods that you have, mm -hmm. and take two of them and gang up on them, <laughs> That's right. and beat them back into hell. That's right. And let the one rule supreme. That's right. God takes the preacher and make him a weapon of war. Do you hear what the Bible says? With thee also will I break in pieces, man and woman. Thou art. Thou art my battle axe. My battle axe. And weapons of war. He's a what? Weapons of war. He's a what? Weapons of war. Now, viewers, that explains why I sound the way I do. That's right. You call it mean. Uh uh. I never saw nobody out there at war grinning at folk. Amen. We're at war. That's right. Amen. With what? Sin. That's right. The devil. Yeah. Wickedness. Yeah. Hank. God, the one thing I say about the devil, he's also at war with God's people. That's right. Amen. Trying to destroy them because he knows that he don't have a chance to be saved. That's right. So he's at war with God's people, yeah. beating them down mentally, crushing them spiritually. Yeah. Amen. Making them fall in love with the world right. and making them leave the God of heaven and earth. That's so right. it's a war. Oh, yeah. It's a fight. Amen. To stay with God. Hey, oh, yeah. You're, you're fighting. Oh, yes. To stay with God. Sometimes it's just a fight to get dressed and to come to God's house. For some, it ain't never a fight to go to work because they think about that money. Amen. Because they, they work overtime. Overtime. Tired. Bags under their eyes. And, and get dark rings around their eyes. They so tired until they look like raccoons. That's right. But if that man promised them an extra $50, an extra $50 or an extra dollar and a half just to stay seven more hours, seven more hours, he'll give you just one dollar and a half. Because of that love for money, they're going to run after that. That's right. Hey, as God promised you, Eternal life. eternal life with him spend the hallelujah blessed be God spend the rest of all eternity amen with him right. he promised to take all your pain away all your hurt all your anger hallelujah all your frustration every pain it doesn't matter where the pain was mentally emotionally psychologically physically, all your pain from the past, all your pain in, hallelujah, glory hallelujah. to God, in the present, and all the pain that may hit you in the future. That's right. God declare, who will take God, amen, yeah, take it away. That's right. And because he made such a declaration, yeah. even, hallelujah, glory hallelujah. to God, even, but I don't feel like it. Don't feel like going to preach the word of God. I think of God's promises. Yes. Amen. Think of God's promises. God shall wipe away. Amen. Right? And then when I think of God's promises, 
And next we go up, get in the bathroom, start shaving, start getting ready. Why? I, I'm looking past this life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So the Bible says our hope is beyond, beyond degree. degree. You've yeah. got to look past this life. And God shall wipe away. Do you hear this? In the book of Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. And what? And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, I said. God shall wipe away all tears from oh, their eyes. Oh, you're right. Hey Amen. Whatever crying you got going on, go ahead. Yeah. Get it over with. Just have your way. Amen. Right. Hey if you got to cry in the morning, cry at night until you can't sleep, until your eyes bloodshot. That's, That's all right. Amen. Right. Hey Wait for your change to come. That's right. Ah! That's right. Hallelujah. Wait! Hallelujah. Oh, God. Glory to God. I said we're going to wait for it. Oh, yeah. What did he say? God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Like some of them. All tears. How much? All tears. How much? All tears from their eyes. That means whatever, whatever got you crying. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take God got you crying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God shall wipe away. Holy Ghost. God shall wipe away. God shall wipe. All tears from their eyes. All your tears. Hallelujah. 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 That's the name of God. Yeah. It doesn't matter. God shall wipe what away. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doesn't matter who calls them. Hallelujah. Where they came from. Right. How many years Hallelujah. I've been crying. Hallelujah. God made a promise here. And God shall wipe away. All tears, All tears from their eyes. All tears from their eyes. All of them. All tears. All of them. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter whether it's little Hallelujah. or much. Yes. He said he's going to get rid of all of them. All tears. Yeah. That's right. Amen. What else he said? And there shall be no more death. No more dying. Neither sorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't be sorry about nothing. Well, no. I have no regrets. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Neither sorrow. Well, I have no regrets. You know, when you're with God, you won't be able to. You won't have. You won't be able to say, "I, I regret that I met him. I regret that I talked to her. I regret I went there." Amen. When He wipe away your sorrows right. and you with Him, no yeah. regrets. That's right. I say no regrets. I Neither said. sorrow. No sorrow. Nor crying. What else? Neither shall there be any more pain. No pain. For the former things are passed away. Former Hallelujah. things are passed away. So this stuff you have now, while you're striving for sanctification. That's right. Eh? That's right. So you have all that now, yeah. while you're striving oh, yeah. for sanctification. That's right. So we die daily, yes. meaning it's a slow death. Yeah. And God sends a preacher, a murderer. Yeah. Then make him a weapon. And if God now, now, yeah, here viewers, these sugar daddy preachers, that right alone let you know God didn't make them. That's right. You hear what God say he's going to make Jeremiah? Thou art my battle axe. Thou art my cotton candy. Thou art my battle axe. Thou art my sponge. <laughs> Thou art my battle axe. Amen. Hallelujah. Thou art my Mr. Softy. Thou art my battle axe. That's what God do to a preacher of you. That's right. God make him a battle axe and? And weapons of war. He's a weapon of war. That's why God make him like he is. That's God right. make him a hard preacher, a tough preacher, a sound preacher. That's right. You look at it as being mean, unloving, uncivilized, barbaric. You call it what you want. But God makes his preacher a battle axe and makes him weapons of war. A weapon of war. Then God used him to take down nations and kingdoms, kingdoms. and everyone, regardless of what status of life that they live and what 
position they have or don't have, whether they're man or woman, boy or child, it doesn't matter. That's right. God take that preacher and design him. God designs that preacher. God designed that preacher. That's why seminary school can't make a preacher. That's they right. just can't do it because a battle axe don't come out of a storm. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's I right. Mean, this thing is made by hands of heaven. Oh, yes. This, 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 this divine battle, battle axe, axe God has to make. You see, when God make him a battle axe, amen, God keep him on the stone. Because the stone grinds the blade to sharpen the blade. And that's why he says in the scriptures that his tongue may be sharpened by the power of God. That's right. You know, I can, in, in the natural, I can take an axe and go through the thickest jungle. Oh, yes. And knock everything out in sight. That's right. Amen. God, take a preacher and make him a battle axe. Battle axe. And drop him in the worst wicked spiritual terrain out here. <laughs> Thank right. God, but with the word of God, right. knock out every beast of the field. Oh, yes. Crush every rich man. Yeah. They can be as thick as a forest. That's right. Thank God, but when the word of God come, you got to fall. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care who you are, brother That's or right. sister. You got to fall, and I'm telling you, you will fall. That's right. Nobody survives the act. That's right. Huh? That's right. Nobody! Right. Thank God nobody survives the battle axe of the word of Thou God. Thou art my battle axe. All right, let's go back now Amen. to the book of Romans, if you will. Back in Romans chapter 12 and at verse 1. All right. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the Blessed mercies of God. Blessed be the name of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies. Do it willingly. A living that sacrifice. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy. Holy acceptable unto God. Now wait a minute. Right then that tells me that it has to be offered up. That's right. In a manner that God will accept it. Accept it. I said it has to be offered. If not, it will stink in God's nostrils. That's right. I said if not, it will stink in God's nostrils. That's right. And anything that stink in God's nostrils doesn't smell right. Yeah doesn't smell good, and the sacrifice is absolutely no good. Oh good. He rejects that which stink in his nostrils. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 5. Give chapter and verse again. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 5. That's what? Which say, stand by thyself. Which says, stand by thyself. Come not near to Don't me. Don't get close to me. For I am holier than I thou. I am more holier than thou. These are a smoke. What? These are a smoke. These are the smoke. In my nose. They stink, I said. Stink in his nostrils. That's right. Amen. So when you don't offer yourself up in the manner that God wants, yeah. he don't accept your sacrifice. Right. He don't accept what you render to him. Right. He don't accept what you give him. He don't accept your Trinitarian belief. Yeah. That's a stinking sacrifice. Yeah. He don't accept flesh and blood is in heaven with him. That's a stinking sacrifice. Yeah. Right. He don't accept the Pope being an apostle. Yes, yeah. sir. That's a stinking sacrifice. Amen. He don't accept uh, you out here murdering and killing. That's a stinking sacrifice. Amen. He don't accept homosexuality. Amen. That's a stinking sacrifice. Right. He don't accept nothing that violates the word of God because if you offer it, it stinks in his nostrils. And you bear in mind, all sacrifices, all offerings must be rendered where it is acceptable, acceptable in the eyes of God and God only. That's right. I don't care if people in the earth accept what you're doing. It doesn't matter if your mama accepted, your daddy accepted, your husband or your wife, your children or your best friend. Who cares? If they accept what you're doing, who cares if they agree with what you're doing? If God don't accept it, you might as well come back. You might as well come back and start all over again and do it the way God said it. Right. All right. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Which is your reasonable service. Wait a minute. We got to give God what? Reasonable service. Your service got to be reasonable. reasonable. It has to be within the reason that God says right. that it's offered. Right. You have to give God reasonable, reasonable service. Service. Now, viewers, are you sanctified and are you giving God reasonable service? Reasonable service. Wait, now, you ain't giving God service and you hate each other. No. 
Eh? No. For Jesus said, what you do to my least ones, you do unto me. You can't give God reasonable service without loving one another. You see how it all just locks in? That's right. Someone say, well, I don't love nobody. Then you ain't, the only one I love is the Lord. You're going to hell. <laughs> eh? I don't love nobody but the Lord. You get ready for hell then. Get ready for it. Because eh? the Lord said you got to love more than him. That's right. What, Pastor Jimmy? Yes. Oh, yeah. God, listen. God said you got to love more than him. Where that scripture at, Pastor Jenny? God said you got to love your enemies. You got to love them that despitefully use you and God. God don't despitefully use nobody. He that loveth his brother. Do you hear this? In the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 10. He that loveth his brother. Abideth in the light. Now hold it right there. Now let me define love. Because these old wicked hell-deserving preachers paint love as someone talking all nice and timid and scared and cowardly and just do a bunch of grinning while they telling you, oh, the Lord is good, the Lord is nice, and I'm telling you, get, Christmas is coming, love your neighbor. I don't care nothing about that trash. That's right. A deceiver can smile at you. Oh, yeah. Tell me the truth. Oh, yes. I don't want to see your teeth. Tell me what's right. That's right. You smiling ain't going to make it better. That's Tell right. me what's right. That's right. What did he say? He that loveth his brother, loveth brother abideth in the light. Abide in God. And there is no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. Abide in God. Mm -hmm. For Jesus said, I am the light. I am the light. Yeah. That's right. So if I abide in the light, I abide in God. I abide in the ways of God. Right. Uh -huh. He that loveth his brother abideth in, in the light. Yes. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. There is none occasion of stumbling in, in him. him. Wait but, a minute. Mm -hmm. Notice. Only way there is no stumbling in him, he has to abide. Abide in the light. Stay in the light. That's right. That's right. Now, if I live by God's word, the word don't make me stumble. That's right. When I stumble, when I get out of the light and get out of the word, because when I step out of the word, right then I'm in darkness. That's right. And when I'm in darkness, naturally you stumble in the dark. That's right. And when I step out the word, I step out of the light and step into darkness, meaning I step in sin, meaning my actions, the actions of stumbling is when one is not walking right. The actions of sin is another way of saying you stumble. That's right. Because a good man steps. Ordered by the Lord. ordered by the Lord. Right. And he, right. God, directs his path. Right. Now, if God directs your path, God don't make you trip. No. God don't make you fumble. No. God don't make you stumble. That's right. Stepping off the path of righteousness Stepping away from sanctification, you're going to go into the rim of sin. And the moment you step in the rim of sin, that's stumbling. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. All right. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. Then what? And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Yes. But he that hateth his brother, he that hate his brother. is in darkness and walketh in darkness. He that hated his brother is in, in sin and, and walk, he walk in sin. And know not whither he goeth. He don't know where he's going. Because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. What? Because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. All right, now, brother. Brother. You know, I just, I just can't hear something red and just keep going. I have to chop at it. Yeah. Because you got one scripture said that one be called the brother. So you have brother. And you have uh, them that are called the brother. That's right. You know, sometime in the hood is common. What's up, brother? Mm -hmm. What's happening, brother? Yeah. Like my brother Frank over there, sleep with a mask on and holding his Bible. <laughs> huh? What's happening, brother? <laughs> Huh? You got them that are called the brother. But now I have written unto you. I want to show you this in the scriptures here. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11. Says what? But now I have written unto you. Now I wrote something to you. Not to keep company. Don't keep company. If any man that is called a brother. If any man that's called. Called a brother. Called a brother. Be a fornicator. Wait a minute. Hmm. 
It tells us not to keep company. Not to keep company. Not to keep company. If, and it's telling us not to keep company with the one that's called a brother company. that have this kind of behavior pattern. If any man that is called a brother be you a got fornicator. Someone that's called a brother, and yet he's a fornicator. Or covetous. Covetous. Or an idolater. Read the whole verse again. Back in 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 11. Yes. But now I've written unto you. I read, yeah, yeah. Not to keep company. All right, that's what I want you to get. Right. Not to keep company. Don't, ain't going out to dinner, no lunch, no breakfast. Hmm. They're not going fishing together. Yeah. Not going downtown. That's right. I see. See, that's the axe. That's one of them. That's the, one of them axe swinging scriptures. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. I, oh yes. That's one of them axe swinging scriptures. Do you hear the word? You better give chapter and verse quick. First Corinthians five and verse eleven. That's what. But now I have written unto now. you. Now. Oh, the apostle, by God's permission, putting, the, putting things in order. Yeah. Letting you know everybody that walk around said they're a brother, they ain't no brother. That's right. Uh -huh. But now I, I have written unto I you, to you not to keep company. Don't keep company. If any man that is called a brother. Now, Amen. now he's itemizing what he don't want you to keep company with. That's right. Someone that called himself a brother. Mm -hmm. And what? Be a fornicator. They're a fornicator. Or covetous. They're they desiring somebody else's. Or, or a, an idolater. Or a what? Or an idolater. They, they, they worship idols. Or a railer. A railer always want to rail and argue and fight. Or a drunkard. Drunkard. So they're taken over by things and become loving and, and they, they lose themselves. Or an extortioner. And ex you've got to be a child of the devil. Amen. You want to extort your own brother out of something? That's right. That's right. Huh? Or an extortion. What else? With such an one. With such a one. No, not to eat. Don't eat what? With such an one. With no. With such a one. No, not to eat. Don't even eat with him. That's right. That's one of them battle act scriptures. That's right. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. That's the doctrine of the apostles. But now I have written unto you. Wait a minute. He's enforcing it when? Now I have written unto you. Oh, that script is just as good now as it was then. That's right. That's right. This scripture comes between so-called brotherhood. Amen. Oh, yeah. Comes between it. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Oh, yes. All right. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother. Why does the spirit don't want us to keep company with this kind? Mm -hmm. Because he you may end up acting like it. That's right. Pick up the attitude. That's right. Pick up the character. And now you start going out there acting like them doing what they do. Oh, the yeah. Bible says, do not after their works. Uh -huh. If any man that is called a oh, brother, brother, be a fornicator. Be a fornicator. Or covetous. Covetous. Or an idolater. An idolater. Or a railer. Railer. Or drunkard. Drunkard. Or an extortion. An extortion. With such an one, no, not with to eat. With such a one, don't you even eat with him. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Uh, Paul said, what do I got to do with them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? We deal with them that's in. Them that's in the body. Them that's in the church. But the then that you come in the church, the mm -hmm. word of God starts judging you. That's right. That's why the Bible said, judge yourselves that ye be not judged. That's right. Uh -huh. But them that are without, God judges. Them that are without, them that's out there in the world, God going to judge them. Therefore, put away from among your Put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That wicked person, and that same wicked person is called what? A brother. Amen. Amen. That same wicked person is called a what? A brother. All right, judge yourselves now. Amen. 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 Judge yourselves now. That's right. Amen. That's one of them battle act scriptures. That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Romans quick. Get back, this now and follow back, me. Back in Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That you present your body. A living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. God wants you to be holy. It, holy. God wants you to present yourself where it's acceptable to him. Acceptable unto God. Which is what? Which is your reasonable and service. And give him reasonable service. And be not conformed be to not this conformed. world. Be not conformed. You're supposed to be in the world but you're not supposed to allow yourself to be taken over by the world until it conforms you, That's it right. changes. Right. Now here you out there smoking and here you is trying to dupe people and con people out of money, scam people. Here, imagine that, yeah. a church brother with a credit card scam. Mm. 
church brother with, and a church sister uh, 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 with a website trying to scam people out of their money. Right. Imagine that. A brother use a sister to scam people out of money. Amen. A brother use a sister credit card scam. Amen. You of the devil, God knows. That's right. I say you of the devil. You, you, you should not, no one that see that behavior and you still indulging in that, ain't no one should be keeping company with you. And Amen. don't even ride with you to church. Ride alone. Amen. Amen. I don't want your, your scamming spirit to get on me. Amen. Eh? Amen. All right. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Transformation is of a necessity. Amen. When you are transformed, change takes place. Trans, be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, a lot of folk come to church, but their mind ain't changed. That's right. Mind haven't changed. Still got that same tactic of duking people right in church. Oh, yeah. Bring that street wizardry <laughs> right out the street, right in church. <laughs> Trying to do scams right in church. He will use thee. You better hear this. You better hear this. In the book of That's what the preacher's been doing. That's right. Right in the pulpit, right in church. That's right. Scamming the people out of millions of dollars. <laughs> Going off in some tongue. You so papa, so papa, yabba dabba do. They go Fred Flintstone on you. That's right. Yabba dabba do. God said, hey, it's time to give me a jet. God <laughs> said, it's time for a car. God said this, God said that. All right. What God says, go get a job and go to work. Amen. You want a jet, you buy it. Yeah. You want a car, you buy it. Yeah. You want a house, work by the sweat of your brow and buy that. That's right. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, and at verse 4. What is it? If thou be for his prophet. What? If thou be for his prophet. You be for his gain. He will use thee. He will use thee. But if yeah. thou have nothing. If you don't have nothing. He will forsake thee. You, I, I have no respect, no regard for any man or woman who will use anybody to get a, a, a doornail out of them. That's right. If you got to use someone to get a safety pin, yeah. that's someone that's rotten, God knows. Oh, yes. Or that's the way you are out there yeah. that should not be the way you are and you claim you're walking with God. That's right. That's why God wants you to present yourself. You got to give God yourself willingly. Right. He ain't going to force your viewers. Yeah. He's not going to force you, not at all. Yeah. When the word of God used the term Present, present yourself. Mm -hmm. present, present your, your body. Present it. That first word. Present. present. When you present something, ain't nobody got to beg you for it. That's right. You give it. Why? You want them to have it. That's right. You don't want them to have it. What you gonna do? Hold on to it. That's right. When you give God yourself. God ain't going to force you. Amen. Mm -mm, not by constraint. That's right. Be surprised how God will bless you. Yeah. If you willingly. If he be willing. You, you hear, hear this now from the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 and at verse 19. If he be. Willing. Willing. And obedient. Glory to God. Amen. If he be willing. If he be willing and obedient. And cooperate. And ye shall eat the good of the land. Ah, he said you will uh, eat the good of the land, meaning mm -hmm. you'll be prosperous and he'll bless you. That's right. On the other hand, but if he refuse, if he refuse and rebel and be stubborn and hard head, ye shall be devoured with the sword. shall be devoured by the sword. Who said it? For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You know you got folk God, do this. God, I want you to do the other. God, I want you to do the other. And yet, you don't want to do nothing for him. That's right. 
God spoke plain here. But if ye refuse and rebel, God spoke plain here. Isaiah chapter 1 at verse 20. If what? But if ye refuse, if what? If ye refuse, if ye be willing, if ye be willing and obedient, I want you to hear. God wants you to cooperate, viewers. That's right. Be willing to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Be willing to leave that man-made religion that come out of hell. That's right. Be willing to leave the church. Be willing to come out of that homosexual bar. Right. Be willing, mister, to take off your rainbow sweater. Amen. 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 Be willing, I say. If ye be willing and obedient. Not just be willing. He wants you to cooperate with him. Right. Be willing. God wants you to cooperate. You want God to cooperate with you? Then cooperate with him. Right. For he said, he'll be with you while you're with him. I say, that's what God said. That's right. Amen. He'll be with you while you be with him. That's right. If you be willing. If you be willing and obedient. And obedient. He shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I bear witness to that. Oh, yeah. I ain't, don't, don't, don't. You can say whatever you like about Pastor Jennings. But I bear witness to that right there. Amen. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm, I'm indicting. And a good thing. Hallelujah. I'm eating good. Yeah. I don't mean naturally, I mean spiritually. Amen. Yeah, he ain't got to constrain me to do nothing. Because if God got to force you to do something, that force may not be pleasant. That's right. Didn't happen to you see what I'm telling you? That's right. I think of Jonah. Yeah. Ain't going to put me in no belly, in the well of no belly, no. No <laughs> belly of no large fish and all fish. them guts. One thing I must say, Jonah was like a person born again. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God, he was down there three days and three nights and the belly of that large fish, yeah. Nineveh, three days journey. was a three days journey. Three days journey. But when the fish spewed him up, yeah. huh, Jonah cut off two days. Two days, that's right. He made it down there in one day. One day. You know, for some people, God got to bring havoc. Yeah. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yeah. God, and I, and I believe this because I see it written. That's right. For some people, God's love, let me use this term. God had to use aggressive love yeah. to quicken some people. Yeah. Aggressive love, he still bring pain to you. Yeah. That's what parents do to their children. Yeah. Aggressive love. My father took that belt and wore my behind out. That was aggressive love. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes love in the form of peace is taken for granted. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Even naturally, it's taken for granted. That's right. Some don't respect you the way they should. They take it for granted. And then they start acting in a way that you're undeserving of. Yeah. And that's the way many of God people is. Israel's done it to them repeatedly. We take God's mercy, God's patience, God's calmness for granted. And God saw it. That's right. He said, I'm ready to cry now like a woman in travail. So a lot of time, God has to resort to Aggressive love yeah. make you get sick, uh -huh. take your job away, yeah. put you in a food line because right. you didn't respect him when you had a roof over your head, so he take the roof from you. That's right. He said, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh That's away, right. so he take away from you what you had. That's right, amen. Because you uh, didn't appreciate it while you had it, and you abused it while you had it, and you abused those that helped you get it. So God said, I fix you. 
Therefore also will I make thee sick. Do you hear God? In the book of Micah chapter 6 and verse 13. Do you hear God talking? Micah chapter 6 and verse 13. All sickness don't come from the devil. That's right. God says. Therefore also will I make I, thee sick. The devil ain't bring them plagues down in Egypt. God did. God did it. The devil didn't bring them pestilence. God did. That's right. Amen. The devil didn't send all those frogs and lice. God did. That's right. The devil didn't turn waters into blood. God did. Yeah. Sometimes we get arrogant with our blessings. That's right. Did you hear the old man? That's right. I, hallelujah. Glory to God. I said we get arrogant yeah. with our blessings and wherein our blessings should make us more humble and more appreciative where we don't get caught up in what we have. That's right. You know how high-minded and arrogant most preachers they get if they had half of what God gave the truth of God? Yeah. Some men is high-minded with the building half of the size of this gym. Hmm. I'm not a fool. That's right. I'm greedy. I want all the blessings that God has, hallelujah, That's that right. God has. I mean, all of them. That's why, I, hallelujah, glory to God. That's why I continue hallelujah. to shake heaven, amen, with prayer and plenty of it. I'm greedy, amen. God got a greedy servant down here. You don't want your blessing, not your business. Don't you bother me. That's right. He gave me a vision. Over 40 years ago, he gave me a vision. And I'm greedy for it. And I'm watching it materialize all around the world, right in front of my eyes. Because the great Yahweh spoke to me and appeared to me and showed me this. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, it, God, and gave me an appetite for it. Some say, I think you're blind. I really don't care what you think. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says. Therefore also will I make thee sick. Amen. You better appreciate what little you have. Oh, yeah. uh, there was ones that had talents. Yeah. You better read that quick. Yes. And uh, I believe one had one talent and the other had another and the other had another. And, but then one that had a talent disrespected. That's right. Didn't appreciate it. That's right. And the devil made a fool out of him. Yeah. I want you to follow me and hear this. Matthew chapter 25, we'll start at verse 14. Follow me, quick. For the kingdom of heaven is, is as a man traveling. Wait. Into First thing he point out is something spiritual. That's right. Letting you know he's going to liken it to something natural. Right. Uh -huh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far Showing country. Showing you if you want to get into God's kingdom. You got some work to do. Traveling. You got work to do if you want to get there. That's right. Uh -huh. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Yes. And unto one he gave. Hold it. He called his own servants. Own I got to itemize this. Yeah. And delivered unto him. His goods. His goods. His goods. Now spiritually, God trusts you with something that's not yours. That's right. Did you see what I'm telling you? God give you the Holy Ghost, it ain't yours. He give you a house, it ain't yours either. That's right. He give you a car, it ain't yours. You got breath in your body, it ain't yours. Amen. Everything you have, lent to you. That's right. Lord give it, Lord take it away. You don't have no say so. Everything you possess, you can keep it or you can lose it. That's right. It's determined on how you treat God. That's right. And how you treat God based upon how you treat each other. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. You better hear now. Come on, son. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling it, into a far country. Notice the language. It's as the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Traveling to a far country. 
who called his own servants, who called his own servants. and delivered unto them his goods. Yes. And unto one he gave five talents. He gave one five talents. To another two. Another two. And to another one. You know, God doeth every man according to his ability. Sometimes God may give one five talents. Mean God give that individual an abundance. Yeah. An abundance. That's right. Amen. Then the other, how many talents? To another two. Uh, another one got two. Uh, he, he, he may not can't function like the one that has the abundance, but he work with what he has. God give him two. Same God is giving him out, but uh, he give one a, an ability that exceed another. That's right. And then he give another. And to another one. And then he give another one because he can't handle the two because uh, he know how he going to treat the one. That's right. So if God, well, Pastor Dennis, if the Lord know what I'm going to do with the one, why give it to me? So you can see yourself. <laughs> Sometimes God will put a person in your life to help you and aid you. And then you treat them worse than a dog. Wherein, if you didn't have that experience, you would know that side of yourself was so cheap. That's right. So arrogant. That's right. So self-righteous. Because you got to be cheap to use anybody. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, well, I love you like I love myself. Don't you get happy? Because some people don't love themselves. Yeah. Oh, no. That explains the way why some people treat you the way they do. They don't love themselves. That's right. Here, here now. And unto one he gave five talents. Five talents. To another two. Two. And to another one. One. To every man according to his several ability. Wait. To every man according to his ability. According to his several ability. According to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Uh -huh. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same. Wait a minute. He that was multi talent that's right. Oh, man, five talents. He traded with the same. And made them other five talents. He gained five more. He increased. And likewise, he that had received two. One to have two. He also gained other two. He went to work and got two more. He didn't just sit around and did nothing. That's right. Amen. You don't look at what you have achieved in life and get content with that. When you can do better, do better. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. God instilled that in me when I was young. Amen. When he gave me that vision, I thought that thing would be fulfilled right away. I didn't think I'd be in the basement for some five years. Amen. But the Lord put me in a basement. Start out with about 12 or 15 people. And then let years go by. And what that years did, challenged my faithfulness with a few. That's right. Challenged my commitment with a few. Challenge my love to the work of God with a few. Amen. Thank God and God seen I was determined to do that thing. He started adding more talent. That's right. Started adding more talent. Started bringing in more, 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 more. And then we went to Briar Road. I was, I wasn't content at all. Amen. Renting from Episcopalians. But it was there. God put us over there. We would take God and I wasn't content. And I just watched it materialize. Amen. I remember we would have broadcast rehearsal. Dan the man stays the act and going over his uh, announcing and whatnot and this, that, and the other. And, and the choir singing. Amen. Then the truth of God blasts over the radio. But I wasn't content. Yeah. Huh? Why? I knew it was more. Yeah. Glory to God than, than what I was presently doing by God's permission. Amen. So I stepped out and went driving around the city and found Frankfurt Avenue, an abandoned Baptist church. Abandoned. Amen. Got the saints together and took them in there. Many was grieved at the sight. And it was a horrible sight. The area that used to be my office, when I first saw it, it had a big puddle. And there was things swimming in it. Don't know what they were, but I knew I didn't want them. Amen. But the talent that God gave us, we brought the people together, worked. Oh, yeah. Amen. And I still wasn't satisfied. Amen. Amen. And then uh, we outgrew that. We went looking. 
God bless us here. Now we're here. Amen. You set aside yet, Pastor Jennings? No! Amen. Why? Glory to God, because the talent that God gave me reached further than Lily Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm not satisfied at all. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful, but I'm not satisfied. Hallelujah. Glory to God, but I'm not satisfied. I'm thankful, but I'm not satisfied because what God showed me is bigger than Franklin. It, what God showed me, thank God, Frankfurt, uh, rather Lindley Avenue, can't even hold it. Amen. Amen. I said Lindley Avenue can't even hold <laughs> what the great God of Abraham has showed me. Hallelujah. Eh? Hallelujah. Can't hold it. Amen. I'm grateful for it. Amen. But Frank, my God, it can't hold it. it Wonderful. It, it just can't. Pastor Dean, I can't see it. Ah, I ain't worried about what you can see. Amen. Amen. God had given me more talents than what he gave you. Oh, Amen. Yes. And I'm out here working, adding. Adding to that talent. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A sure return. Right. Amen. I see a return. Thank God on the faith that God put in here. Amen. All right. And likewise also, he that had received two. He that received two. He also gained other two. Gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in oh, the yeah, earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I want you to pay attention to the one that only got one. Amen. I want you to pay attention mm -hmm. to this one that have one. One. All right. But he that had received one, he that got one, went and digged in, in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh yes. and, and reckoneth with them. And so Real he, quick. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents. This represents the coming of the Lord. Amen. Evaluating your work that he entrusts you with. Amen. I want you to understand this. This represents the coming of Christ, evaluating the work that he entrusts you with, how you went about serving him. All right? Because so, he said, it is light. It is light. For the kingdom of heaven is the as a man. The kingdom of heaven. Is, this parable is likened unto the kingdom of heaven. Traveling. In other words, mm -hmm. you're going to be rewarded That's right. for doing all right, and you're also going to be rewarded for doing nothing. That's right. You better hear. And so he that had received five talents he that received five. came and brought other five talents, saying, All right, Lord, whatever you do, whatever skill or talent that you have, mm -hmm. use it to the best of your ability. Don't sit back. Why I always see that brother on that exit, on all the auxiliaries? Why I see that sister on all the auxiliaries? Why you don't see yourself on no auxiliary? Amen. I don't care what you can put your hands to do. Roll your hands up like the announcement was made. They need plenty to help pack Bibles. When, when a benediction is given, it should be a number that none can number. Yes. Right upstairs, packing Bibles for sinners and for saints that want to read God's Word. Yes. Nobody care about what you have on. If your blouse get dirty or your skirt get a smudge, brush it off or send it to the cleanest. Uh, or if your white shirt get dirty, go on upstairs and help pack them Bibles. Why? This is the work of God here. That's right. Not sit around and stand and talk when you see work got to be done. Huh? Yeah. Eh? That's right. What it say? And so he that had received five he talents received came five talents. and brought other five talents. And this is why some people is more blessed than others. That's right. Because some just sit around and complain but do absolutely nothing. That's right. And then you have some, every opportunity presents itself. They are involved yeah. in the work of God. Yeah. All right. And so he that had received five talents came yes. and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, uh -huh. thou deliverest unto me five talents. Yes. Be behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Yes. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful well servant. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Do you hear that? That's right. That's right. That's plain, isn't it? Amen. Oh, God, I was faithful with about 12 to 15 people yeah. in a basement. Yeah. And now God has blessed us to be ruler over many. But I, had, I, I couldn't take the talent and bury it. That's right. You got a skill God bless you with. He knows what you're going to do with it. 
And he know whether you're going to be productive or just do nothing. That's right. Huh? That's right. Listen at this. His Lord this said closely. Unto, his Lord said unto him. His Lord said to him. Well done, thou good and faithful well servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful, You've over, been a faithful over a few things. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make I thee will ruler make over many things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That's what I want God to say to me. You've been faithful. Come on, come on in. Enter thou. Into the joy of thy Lord. Come on in with your heart. That's right. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. And if you wise, that should be what you want. Yeah. All right. He also that had received two talents came. All right, the one that got two talents. Came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Lord, you gave me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Yes. His Lord said unto him, well done. You've done well. Good faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. You've been faithful over a few. I will make thee ruler over I'm many things. I will make you ruler over a lot. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You come on. You got your chance to be saved. Then he which had received the one talent came. Ah, I want you to look at the one that only got one talent. Just Amen. one. One. All right. Then he that had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. Oh, uh, have you noticed? And none of the others tried to give him a rap session. And none of the others try to give a sales pitch about nothing. That's right. But the one that had one talent knew something Amen. about the Lord. That's right. He knew something about the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee. That I knew, knew thee. That what? That thou art a hard man. You're strict. Reaping. You are no nonsense man. That's right. Uh -huh. Reaping where thou hast not sown. Reaping. Glory to God where you have not sown. And gathering where thou hast not straw. Gathering where you have not straw. And I was afraid. I was scared. And went and hid thy talent I in the earth. I buried what you gave me. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slowful servant. When you don't do nothing, and not doing nothing for God, what are you? Thou wicked and slowful servant. You're wicked and lazy. That's right. Any capacity that come under the work of God and you don't want to do nothing, what did God say? Thou wicked and slowful servant. Amen. Now, Pastor Jennings, what did God say? Thou wicked and slowful servant. What? Thou knewest that I reap where I sow You not. knew that I would gather where I, where I planted. And gather where I have not straw. Yes. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money. You ought to have put my goods. To the exchangers. To the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received my then own with usury. Then at my coming. I should have received mine own with usury. I would have got my own with something added to it. Take therefore the talent from him. Now let's now let, 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 let me break it down. Banking, you deposit, you get interest. Are you getting me? That's right. The interest that comes from the bank is a form of reward for allowing that banking institution to use your monies. Are you following what I'm telling you? That's right. The reward That's right. that the Lord gives is eternal interest. Yeah. You are the principal. That's right. Are you kidding me? That's right. And the interest that he has aligned for you is eternal life but you must use the talent that God gave you. Using your God-given talent for him is depositing yourself into the will of God. It's depositing yourself, placing yourself into God's will, and he promised interest. Now, interests come two ways, in this life and the life to come. Interests come in this life by adding to your virtue 
and by giving you blessings that you won't have room to receive because you put yourself wholeheartedly depositing yourself into the will of God. And he gave you interest. Start opening up the windows of heaven, blessing you with this, blessing you with that, blessing you with the other, blessing you with the other. Now, the mistake that we make, once we get the interest on the principle, we get taken over by the interest. We get taken over by what we have. That's right. Or we get content. I mean, think, if I was content in the basement, I would never have met you. Amen. We would never have got it out. That's right. If I was content on Briar Road, I wouldn't know you. Mm. If we was content on Frankfurt Avenue, we wouldn't got out of Frankfurt Avenue. There were some people on Frankfurt Avenue that were so content looking at us preach and the minister between those two beams like it's a picture frame. Amen. And if I even talk about leaving Frankfurt, oh, Pastor Dennis, we can raise money and do this, we do this. I remember there were several brothers when the guy said, listen, man, I'm tired of this place. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> oh, Pastor Dennis, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, like, we, we can do this. We can do a fundraiser. We can sell fish dinners. I said, listen, you will have to catch a whole lake to fix this place. <laughs> yeah? You will have to catch a whole lake. I told him, I said, it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. We don't outgrow it. We're not going to try to put new wine in the old bottles. That's right. I had to step out on hallelujah. I had to step out on faith and trust God and believe God. And I went searching, looking, praying. Hallelujah. We came to Lindley Avenue in 2014. We didn't tell the church until two years later. Someone said someone could have bought it in two years. That was one of my prayers. When I saw it and came in here, I asked God, I don't care who give an offer. Don't let it fall through. Don't even let them get their loan. Don't let no institution of money agree to them. And there was offers that came. I talked to the representative of the Catholic Diocese who represented them. His name was Patrick. He said, Pastor Jennings, I watch you on television. You say some hard stuff, man. I said, Patrick, any offers came in on this? He said, oh, yeah. He said, but Slim, they couldn't get their money. I looked at him and said, thank you, Jesus. He said, well, Pastor Jennings, maybe, maybe you'll get it. I said, I'm, I, I've been talking to the Lord. He said, well, Pastor Jennings, I, I pray you get it. I said, and, I, and I went talking to God. That's right. And I was so happy when I first told the church in 2016, the way everybody responded, mm. the way everybody responded around the world. And I often think of that woman preacher who disagree with me preaching against women preachers. And yet she wrote me a letter and gave me a check for $100. She said, I don't agree with you on this women preacher issue, but she said, I saw that church on your telecast. She said, it's so beautiful. I want you to have it. Here's a $100 check. Woman preacher sent it in. Now, now I got more, wound, more room to preach against her still. <laughs> still preach against her. You can't. Take what God gave you and bury it. Bury. What do that mean? Don't limit God. Hallelujah. You have to take what God gave you. Have you noticed the one with the five and the one with the two? They worked at it. That's right. They worked at it and it became productive. That's right. Not sit back and do nothing. The Lord preach, seek and ye shall find not, and it shall be open. It's like I tell our young people that's going to school, in college. Whatever you go to major in, all right, you get associate degree. Don't sit back like there's no other degrees 
in that profession than an associate? Get another one. Bachelor's, master's, whatever it may be, PhD. Stop sitting back waiting for someone to push you if you don't have it in you to work. What did the Bible say about the one? Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then in my coming I should have received my own with usury. Yes. Take therefore the talent from him. Take the talent from him. And give it unto him which hath ten talents. Wait a minute. God said, you don't want to do nothing? That's I'm going to take what you got. That's right. And I'm going to give it to someone who I know don't mind working. That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. God say, I take it. Take therefore the talent He's from him. fulfilling his word from the Old Testament. He gave him one talent, mm -hmm. but then he took it, took which fulfilled the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. I don't care who you are. I don't give two cents what position you have and what little blessings God gave you with. If you don't serve God with these things, just like he gave it, the Lord says he'll do what? Take therefore the talent from him. Take the talent from him. And give it unto him which has ten talents. Give it to him that got ten talents. For unto every one that hath. To every one that hath. Shall be given. It shall be given. And he shall have abundance. And he, hallelujah, to God shall have abundantly. But from him that hath not. Him that have not. Shall be taken away even that he, which he hath. Amen. Did you hear this? But from him that hath not, that don't have nothing, shall be taken away even that which he hath. You ain't doing nothing. You want to sit around and lie to yourself that you're cute? <laughs> Amen. I care nothing how fool cute you think you are. How much money you spend for your suit of clothing? That's right. Yeah. It ain't nobody too good. Don't work for God. That's Nobody. Right. That's right. That's right. Down here working at the church, I get dirty just like the brothers do. That's right. Amen. They get sludge hammer, I get a sludge hammer. They get a paintbrush, I get a paintbrush. They lift and I'm lifting. And I can't straighten up the next day from being bent over, but I'm lifting. You have the kind of people who don't mind working, but then you have the kind of people that just love to sit back and reap the benefits right. of the works of others. That's right. And God says, for about the one talent, take, go up, go up. Take therefore the talent from him. Take it from him. And give it unto him which hath ten talents. Whatever blessings you have, house, apartment, car, job, who cares? You can lose it. That's right. I don't care how long you had it. That's right. God will move on your supervisor to do a layoff, and the only one getting laid off is you. Yeah. <laughs> that entire company stop right at you because you treat God like trash. That's right. You better respect Him. You better honor Him. View us. You better get what I'm telling you. Repent of your sins, hard head. Don't let the devil make you waste your energy and get mad at me. This message of holiness is from God everlasting word. God has made me a battle axe, a weapon of war. I'm not sent to pat you on your back. Right. I'm sent to tell you what's right to keep you out of the lake of fire. That's right. That's you right. preachers that's in these church organizations, pack up and leave. Pack your members up and leave. You mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and husbands and wives and grandfathers and aunts and uncles, leave your church. Leave these man-made religions. Repent of your sins. You politicians, it doesn't matter. The Lord God himself is not a Democrat or Republican. God Almighty is holy. That's right. Will you bear in mind, when the Lord appear in the heavens, Coming for the exact same thing he left here. Yeah. Then Peter. Then Peter said unto them, repent. The apostle said to the world, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. To get your sins washed away. God have never told nobody to bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ where you are. Nobody. God have never told nobody. 
pray us in this prayer. God have never told nobody, join the church. Never. God have never told nobody to do these things. God said to the apostles, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, meaning for the removing of your sins. And ye shall receive and the gift of the Holy Ghost. And shall receive the gift of God. For the promises unto you. And to your children, unto them that is afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And it is written, the Lord have spoken. He have called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Anybody here want to get it right on scriptural terms? And be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, you that are standing, go right to the back. You that are standing, go right to the back. All right, sisters and brothers, let's come help the ones that are standing, please. All right, we're going to let you go. Next webcast will begin at 5 o'clock. Let us all stand. And remember, right after the benediction, I need brothers and sisters, plenty of you. Upstairs to the second landing, we got plenty of Bibles that have to go out around the world. And we need them packed. We need the brothers to help load them up. All right, we're going to turn the service in the hand of Brother Minister Williams, and he'll close us out in prayer. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you and praise you once again for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the gospel of God that was preached in our hearing by the man of God. We thank you, Father God, how you blessed the souls to repent and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, remember those on the altar waiting on the Holy Ghost. They may be filled with thine spirit. Father God, continue to strengthen the man of God. Continue to bless him. Continue, to, Father God, to help him teach and preach the truth of thine gospel. Father God, now bless us as we go and wait again for the second session. Father God, that more souls may get a chance to repent and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless us not only to be hearers of the word, but doers also. Father God, we do pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.